Pastor Chelsea and Kevis, who's kind of peeking his little head in here today. Hey, I have a question. Do you ever see those crazy infomercials on TV? You know, the ones that are like, if you buy this product, it will make you so much healthier or it'll make your house so much cleaner. Well, it's because those people who make those products want you to believe that if you use their product, you're gonna win at life. You're gonna win at having the cleanest house or having the, the strongest body or eating the best food. But the truth is, well, those products don't always deliver. But get this, I was doing some reading online and I found out that you really don't need those expensive things. You can win at life using some pretty regular stuff around your house. Check this out. Do you ever get frustrated that your teeth aren't as white as you would like? Get this, lemon juice and baking soda mixed together can create a mixture that just might be better than your favorite toothpaste. No guarantees on flavor though, but you will have white and lemony fresh breath. What about smoother skin? Would you like to have skin that's acne free and smooth as a baby's behind? Well, melt some chocolate and olive oil together and it gives you a beauty product that apparently can't be beat and is also possibly delicious. You probably use a tennis ball like this for playing an actual tennis game or wall ball or for playing catch with your dog, but it also has another incredible use. If you've had a long day on your feet, you can massage a tennis ball on the bottom of them and you'll be feeling fine in no time. And lastly, we have sugar. Now, I can't really tell you if the other remedies on this list work, but I can tell you this. This one works. I know because I've tested it out. So sugar is in lots of foods that we eat, but have you ever swallowed a spoonful of sugar dry? It sounds weird, but it actually helps if you have the hiccups. Like I've said, I tried it and it actually works pretty quickly. Okay, so those are not the uses that you would think to have those products be used for. I wouldn't think that baking soda and lemon juice would be a good substitute for toothpaste. And I certainly wouldn't put a tennis ball on the bottom of my foot on a regular basis. But according to these different sources, these are ways that you can win at different health problems. Unexpected items helping you win at something. You know, that kind of reminds me of today's true Bible story. In today's true Bible story, we'll meet a man named Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a king who was facing some pretty scary threats from an enemy army. And God gave him a solution to the problem, but it was not at all in the way you would expect. I can't wait to tell you more about it. But first, I want you to think about this. Sometimes God uses what seems like us, very strange ways to win. But when we obey his ways, we're given victory. And that's actually our main thing today. When we obey God, he gives us victory. But that victory might not look like what we expect. Let's dive into our story and find out more. Today's story comes from the book of 2 Chronicles. Let's say the names of the books we've talked about so far. Ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. Remember, we're at the part of God's big story where many different kings led God's people. Like we learned last week, some kings were good, some were bad, and some were just okay. Today's king was good. He's considered good because he followed God and helped lead the people to follow God also. Like I said earlier, his name was Jehoshaphat. I know it's a crazy name, but that's what it was. King Jehoshaphat found out that some of his kingdom's enemies, the Moabites and Ammonites, were coming to war against God's people. He was troubled by this and asked God what he should do. King Jehoshaphat decided to include the people of his kingdom in this process of asking God what to do. He asked his people to fast. Fasting means going without food for a time in order to spend that time focusing on and praying to God. With all the people, Jehoshaphat prayed to God. He set a good example to the people in his prayer by being mindful that God was the ruler over all of them and that he had given them this land before. 
He closed his prayer by saying, We don't have the power to face this huge army that's attacking us. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you to help us. God answered the king and the people by giving a message to one of the priests, Jehaziel. God told them they didn't need to be afraid or feel discouraged because this battle belonged to God. He gave them specific instructions that the next day they would march down to where the enemies were. They would find them in the desert. Then, God again used Jehaziel to remind the people they wouldn't have to fight this battle. They would need to stand firm and watch God win it for them. The Bible says as soon as Jehaziel stopped talking, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face toward the ground. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem also bowed down. They worshipped the Lord. You know, this probably sounded like kind of a crazy plan to the people. So they weren't supposed to go and attack this army right away. They're supposed to stay put. Then they go the next day and then they're supposed to just stand there and look at them. They're not supposed to fight or anything. Maybe they thought they should have been preparing an attack plan or getting their weapons ready. But despite all of that, they chose to obey what God said. And God gave them something pretty cool as the result. The next day, the people set out just as God had instructed them. On their way, they sang praises to God. They sang, Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love continues forever. You've probably heard us sing songs with those same words in church. Well, while the people were marching and singing, the Lord sent ambushes against the Moabites and Ammonites. Basically, they started fighting against each other. By the time God's people got to them, the enemies had all destroyed one another. All that was left was for Jehoshaphat and his people to get the plunder. This means they got all the valuable stuff from their enemies. There was so much stuff, it took them three days to get it all. The Bible says that after this, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned to Jerusalem. They were filled with joy. Then it says, They entered Jerusalem and went to the Lord's temple. They were playing harps, lyres, and trumpets. God wants us to talk to him. He wants us to tell him our needs, and he wants us to tell him how we're feeling. And he wants us to listen to him. When he gives us instructions, he wants us to obey. So when we obey, we'll be victorious. That means that we'll win every time, right? Wrong. Sometimes being victorious in God's eyes means that someone else might come first. But you'll know that because you obeyed God, you strengthened your relationship with him. Your confidence grows and your peace. I mean, that sounds like the best win of all to me. Let's pray and ask God to help us keep our eyes on him. Dear Lord, we want to be people who keep our eyes on you when we know what to do and when we don't know what to do. God, we want to be like Jehoshaphat and obey you even when it sounds crazy. And we want to be people who share your love with others. God, would you help us to be all of these things? Amen. Before you go, here's a fun idea from Digging Deeper with Daisies and Doodles. This is a picture of my friend Eleanor. She's modeling a great idea that you can do to help you remember today's true Bible story. Get a piece of cardboard or print out the picture of a shield from the PDF from Daisies and Doodles. There's a link in the description of this video. And write God on it. You can remember how God protects us. Then, go ahead and cut a vest out of the brown paper bag. You can use this to remember that God will fight our battles for us. We just need to obey Him. Think of ways that you can obey God while you work on this activity. Alright gang, thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you'll continue to grow in the ways that you trust in God and that you obey Him. Love you lots. I'll catch you next time.